I want to share on a vitamin today that you probably have never really focused on, and this is vitamin P. You may not even heard of it before. I'm going to break it down what it is. I'm going to show you the foods that it's in. I'm sure it's really valuable, especially in today's world. Let me go right to sort of a heavy chart out of the gates to help you to understand what vitamin P does in your body and why I believe you should be using it, taking it, and probably are deficient in it. Let's go to this. It's a picture of the cell. You may have made one of these when you were a kid. You know, you had like the mitochondria floating around and you put a cell and you had a nucleus and maybe kind of did some of that. Well, that's what this picture is looking at. And essentially, uh, what I've drawn in on the diagram here is when a virus is trying to enter your cell from an immune perspective, and this is something a lot of us have been very anxious and worried about, viruses coming across the cell membrane, um, getting into the cell, infecting it, this is where we become sick, right? Um, and some of them can be fatal. Well, your body then has to deliver in nutrients that are gonna help kill the replication of the virus because if a virus continues to replicate inside of your body and inside of your cells, the more of it you get, that's what can put you into a bad state like a uh, cytokine storm or you know throwing up or whatever it may be. So this process of a virus getting into your body also needs something coming behind it to kill the virus. Now, what does that one main thing that does it is zinc, Z-N, on the chemical breakdown and uh, nomenclature for zinc. So zinc needs to come in through the cell and then it will stop viral replication. Now, zinc is not what I'm talking about today, but zinc is very powerful at stopping viral replication, but it cannot do it on its own. What does it need? It needs a zinc ionophore, okay? Now, the reason I wanna talk about zinc ionophores is because the ionophore is just a fancy word for shuttle. And the uh, zinc ionophore is going to be a shuttle that's going to give zinc the needed ride to fit through the hole in the cell to get in to stop the replication of the virus and do what it needs to do. Pretty important process for us. Now, there are a lot of drugs out there that are trying to do exactly what I just showed you but I'm gonna show you how to get this from food in just a moment. But one of the more popular ones, very buzzworthy one that you might have heard of, hydrochloroquine or chloroquine. Chloroquine is a zinc ionophore. So one way that they're discussing that chloroquine is actually working against viral replication and being a used treatment is because it gets zinc and other immune killers that stop viral replication across the cell membrane. But it has a whole ton of side effects. I won't go into all of those right now, but it is a drug. There are side effects involved with it. It's a lengthy one. I've actually gone through uh, in my Immune U Masterclass the side effect packet for this drug. So I'm always looking, well, Okay, now that I understand the concept of what the drug is trying to do, and we wanna get zinc into your body's cells so you can stop viral replication, and what you're about to find in a little bit, a whole other host of benefits. Is there anything else that could be used to give zinc a ride? And that answer is exactly what you expect, vitamin P. Vitamin P is a group of bioflavonoids, flavonoids, phytonutrients, plant-based, they come from fruits and vegetables, and you may know this vitamin P as quercetin. Quercetin is actually a zinc ionophore, and it actually helps stop the replication of viruses when you put it into your body. Fruits and vegetables like kales and cranberries and cherries and apples and oranges, onions are a great source of quercetin, especially if you eat them raw. It helps to get zinc in it, stops viral replication. Citrus fruits, lemons, limes, broccoli, kale, tomatoes. Studies have proven that it is a zinc ionophore, which means it's going to give zinc a ride into your cell to stop viral replication. Now, we can talk about taking zinc and absorbing zinc 10 to 50 milligrams, but it's gotta be taken with quercetin. Also, another component that helps it is vitamin C. Well, the good news is a lot of these vitamins that are pertaining to immune health are all found in the exact same foods. So we look at citrus fruits, broccolis, kales, apples, berries. These are important. A zinc ionophore is quercetin, but what else does it do? 
So glad you asked. Number one, it reduces inflammation. So I believe you should be getting quercetin in and getting these bioflavonoids, vitamin P, into your body to help fight inflammation. And inflammation is a body's response to stress, but it can actually help, quercetin can, to reduce chronic inflammation in the body. So the stuff that's just lingering and still being there and your wounds aren't healing up. Excessive inflammation in the body, oftentimes caused by virus, quercetin could be a good response. Number two, quercetin lowers the risk of cancer. There's research that shows that diets that are high in these bioflavonoids, like vitamin P, quercetin, can lower the risk of cancer, such as prostate cancer. So for men, that's probably a big one to be adding in. Number three, one of my favorite uses for quercetin is allergy relief. Now, it has antihistamine properties that protect your cells from triggering allergic responses and reactions. So for example, in my allergen support, I use higher doses of quercetin because it's designed to be used for a shorter period of time, maybe when there's a seasonal allergy going on, um, along with other powerful antihistamines like nettles. And when you combine these together, you're getting a very good natural solution to Allegra. Vitamin P, quercetin brings that. Number four are neurological disorders and the defense of them. It's been shown that quercetin and bioflavonoids that come from food are correlated with higher mental ability, especially as we get older in age, and they lower the likelihood, get this, they lower the likelihood of developing certain neurological conditions like Alzheimer's and dementia. Quercetin, yet another powerhouse. Lowering, number five, the risk of heart disease. Perhaps the biggest potential benefit that's kind of you know, under the radar of vitamin P and quercetin is its ability to lower the risk of heart disease. Heart disease is the number one killer of Americans. It's closely linked with high cholesterol and high blood pressure. It's believed that quercetin can actually improve the health of your blood vessels. Additionally, quercetin may support lowering your blood pressure if it's absorbed properly, and long-term absorption of quercetin can result in lower cholesterol levels. And then finally we come full circle, number six, to infectious disease. I think it's a must that it be put in for immune health. It has known antibacterial properties and it can fend off certain bacterials and respiratory infections and digestive infections. And then of course, it is very good at fighting viruses. Now there are a couple major keys when taking quercetin. First off, the warning. And there's significant benefits to this. And if you're taking lower doses, there's not much to worry about. But if you are taking certain medications like antibiotics or cyclosporin or a liver medication, you might wanna to talk to your doctor about any possible interactions or pharmacists to make sure you're not like taking some huge dose. And the only time I really recommend a really high dose of quercetin is during a major allergic response or if you're trying to you know, get your histamines under control, you have a histamine response, that's when I would do higher doses. And that means 200, 400, 600 milligrams of going that high of quercetin. But when it comes to viral responses and fighting off viruses and getting the antibacterial impact, 20 to 100 milligrams a day is a fantastic dose. You're not gonna have any negative kickback from that and it's gonna be doing its job. Now, something of very, very crucial to note, if you are taking a quercetin or wanna take vitamin P, check this out. Vitamin P, quercetin, and vitamin C, synergistically work together. They must be taken together for absorption. So what I just said is as long as you're properly absorbing the quercetin, then you get the benefits to the blood vessels. Then you get the benefits to the blood pressure. Then you get the benefits to the cholesterol and the neurological disorders. But you have to absorb it. It's not what you take, it's what you absorb. Vitamin C allows the quercetin to get absorbed. So, to sum this up here, when you're looking at an immune defense just altogether, vitamin D is going to help fight against that immune response. Zinc, which can be taken with it, and when vitamin D and zinc are taken together, they absorb better. If we can get zinc into the cells, it can stop viral replication. Quercetin does that, and in order to properly have enough quercetin absorbed in your body, you're gonna need vitamin C. So the powerhouse is vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin P. Quercetin. So I think it's the one that you need to really consider putting into the system. Uh, I have it in my high dose vitamin C powder. I put the two of them together to get it in. Um, with the vitamin D complex, I combine the vitamin D and the zinc and the probiotics and magnesium together. It's how these work together when you start to understand them really helps their absorption and really unlocks 
their healing powers. Vitamin P might just be that immune boosting nutrient that you need from some delicious foods like citrus fruits and onions and kale that can you use to get it into your system or supplement with it but make sure you take it properly with vitamin c to get it into the system get it absorbed there's a whole bunch of other benefits for your heart for cancer for neurological health all of these unknown hidden benefits of possible super vitamin to get into your system now next up to tie all that together for you i do want you to stop taking vitamin d until you watch this video right here. Check it out.